G'day folks, welcome back to the other farm and welcome back to our third episode of Around the Fire. We haven't bought one for a few months. Uh, we've been piling up the questions but mm. work just got in the road and we thought we'd put one out now. So it's getting cooler weather over here. So it's perfect time for a fire. Um, it, it probably wouldn't be cool enough, wouldn't be, probably wouldn't be cold for you guys over in the States and uh, Canada that follow the channel. That's five degrees overnight which I think that converts to 41 degrees Fahrenheit for you guys. And we're getting tops of around about 1920, which is yeah. 66 degrees Fahrenheit, if I am uh, if I stand to be corrected, but that's pretty close. So it's probably not even cold for you guys, but- It's pretty cold for us. But it's definitely crispy over here at five degrees Celsius. So yeah. uh, the grass is starting to slow down now. So uh, we'll probably stay handed over to Nick. I think that's probably about it. And uh, thanks for watching YouTube. Uh, guys everything yeah, you've been putting thank up you, everybody the support's been great the, the numbers are going up there so it drives us to do more yeah, so yeah that is true too okay everybody i do have to apologize for my voice i think i'm coming down with the flu at the moment and as again please for the first question the name of greg i'm so sorry if i am saying it wrong i do apologize now so the first one is from greg Swerkent, and he has asked, what is your approach to weeds, mainly the baddies, like the thistle and blackberries? Well, my approach is I, I generally send the coal out for anything that's got prickles on it, because <laughs> I've got soft hands and I don't that want to touch them. That is true too. <laughs> well, this is, this is a question we've been putting off on the back burner for ages. This is a big question. and. Um, going to mm. take a bit to answer so when we first bought the properties um more so well both properties actually we weren't into the regenerative farming and we used to go around and foliage spray mm. just about all the bad yeah. weeds and the scots thistles i'm sure greg's talking about the thistles here so we yeah, have scots Scotchies. thistles i'm not sure whether he's overseas or whether he's in australia but we have scots thistles here we used to spray them and they were copious amounts especially on the other farm mm. they were everywhere and it was just costing a fortune and poison so we just we opted not to poison so we went around and cut them off with a cane knife and it wasn't until yeah. probably oh we'd do that for a few months every few months we'd go back and we noticed that even though we we're cutting off a ground they were still shooting back off yeah. off the old cut yeah. so that wasn't working and it wasn't until covid hit that uh just before COVID, actually, probably you know, a year or so before COVID, that I come across um, the regenerative farming. So, and that's when I thought there is a better way of doing this, and chemicals wasn't the way to go yeah, because it was actually sure. destroying the environment, and you know, it was just killing the microbiology. I found out, like, you know, I didn't even know there's a world below the soil. I knew there's worms, but that's it. But there's a whole yeah. monstrosity of microbes under there that it you're harming when you're world. poisoning. So coming back to what we do now, we selected, when we first started, we selected five species, which were wild cotton, um, yeah. Nangura burr, the, like, solder apple, lantana. Tana, yeah. Oh, there's another one I can't remember off the top of my tongue. But anyway, we went around and we hand pulled all of those weeds for probably the first 12 months. Yeah. Because with wild cotton, we probably had 20, 20, 25 ute loads within, oh, I'd was... say within six months. And wild <laughs> cotton was that. everywhere. I'm sure I had more wild cotton <laughs> than I had grass. And we pulled it all. And then we've got it down now yeah, to yeah. probably half a ute load to three quarters of ute load for the whole property now when we pick yeah. from 25 from our first pick down to half. So... We'll always hand pull the wild cotton. Mm. We're always going to hand pull the lantana because foliage spray was a fortune. Plus, yeah. we're thinking about the soil life now. We're not destroying it. Yeah. And we've got control of the Nagora burr and the soda apple. So those five, mm. we will always hand pull. You know, but but moving forward, the rest of them are there. The Scots thistles we've just decided to leave. <coughs> Excuse me, because here on the trial property. When we went down the regenerative farming route, we found that when we're laying carbon and grass over and building the topsoil, covering Mother Nature, 
the grass would outgrow the weeds. Because all Mother mm. Nature is, I keep, yeah. trying, I keep trying to say, all Mother Nature wants to do is cover herself. She just protect wants to cover herself, herself yeah. protect herself from the elements, keep the soil, the microbes yeah. happy. So with laying the carbon and your regenerative and you're moving the cattle through cell and they're laying that grass down, building that thatch, converting it into, you know, armoring the soil and you're doing that continuously, breaking topsoil, Mother Nature doesn't need to worry about it because we've got that thatch and Locke keeps saying, we don't graze our plants right down, we graze them to two thirds height. So mm. it's hard for the sun to get through those two to thirds as true. well as the inch or two of thatch to dry out the soil. So we found here that we're getting a lot less weeds since we started our regenerative farming practices. Mm. And out on the other so farm, is. we're still continuous grazing. We're in a transitional period there where dad's selling out because he's at age now, he wants to get out of the cattle and retire. And he's always been a continual grazer. So at the moment it's all being continually grazed and I'm slowly getting into regenerative out there. So all my timeless products have come. So it's only a matter of a month or so and I'll start erecting on that fence once I finish my clearing. Because at the wow. moment there's probably 60% of my property not cleared. And where it's not clear, we can't get the cattle, I'm still working on the soil. So we had a heap of weeds there. I've been slashing when, this, when the plants the pastures come to seed and that's added that thatch. There's a video there of building topsoil. Mm. Pasture, I think mm. that one there, that was laden with weeds. And the more slashing I've done, the more carbon I've added to the ground and you've got that thatch there, the grass isn't coming through no more. The thatch is there and the plant, the pasture itself is thickening. The weeds don't come through because the grass is too thick. We're covering it. The pasture's getting thicker from all the seeds which are germinating from when I'm slashing it. Mm. it so, it hard. yeah, so our, our Moving forward for weeds, it's only those weeds we spoke about that we will hand pull. The rest, we know the soil will get better because it's also deficient in the, the minerals content as well because it's been overgrazed. So we got a mineral feeder. You would have seen the video, the mineral feeder video. We're going to put 10 selective supplements in that mineral feeder to add the minerals back to the ground. So the cattle will poop it out and you get 80% mm -hmm. of that mineral back on the ground. When your mineral goes back to the ground, it comes in your plant. The cattle don't need the mineral no more. And that's building back the soil uh, nutrients and the minerals that is also deficient in. So, so the weeds won't grow. Your pastures will thrive and your weeds won't be there. Because the only reason the weeds are thriving at the moment is because it's also deficient. Not only it's bare, it's deficient in nutrients. And that's why that's and that is why they're growing because Mother Nature's throwing up weeds that is only going to suit that soil yeah. deficiencies. It's not going to throw up a weed that's going to die. It's going to throw up a weed that is that will survive in the deficiency of that soil. So the, the more nature. healthy you can get the soil, the less weeds you're going to have, and the more pasture you're going to have. So I probably don't need to go on about that. I can talk about that all night when it comes to weeds and soil and biology, but. I think, I've, uh, I think I've just about covered that. And blackberries, we haven't got that many blackberries on our property, so... Mm. But when we do come across yeah, them, we hand pull them. We hand pull them. Like, we'll never go back to yeah. spraying in our paddocks again. Yeah. It, it just, yeah, it's, it's not good for the cattle and it's not good for the for the microbiology in the soil or the worms, so... It's not good for us either. And it's not, yeah, well, it's definitely not good for us either, yeah. so... That's probably my approach. Um, yeah, if you've got any more, if you want any more questions or answers on that just flick us another uh, email and yeah, or yeah. Out of, on the youtube channel and uh i'm happy to answer these questions so because i am passionate about it that you are okay moving on yes moving on okay next we have alley cat and it begins with have you looked into getting goats or sheep for the noxious weeds that you mentioned They'd be a better option, if possible, than spraying. Also, look into Alan Savory. He's another good one to follow on what you want to do. Keep up the good work. Watching from the US. Well, that's nice. Yes, nice Ali, Cat, Ali Cat's a regular of ours. He's, uh, he's asked quite a few questions and uh, comments on our YouTube channel since yeah. we started. So, yeah, thanks yeah. for that, Ali Cat. Thank you. Very much appreciated. So... As for the goats and the sheep, definitely sheep's on the card, mate. I know mm, they yeah. uh, eat different forage than what the cattle do, so we'll end up probably putting the sheeps in first and then following up with the cattle. We're just, we mm -hmm. just got to see how fast they move 
compared to the cattle or may have to be vice versa. Yeah. Sheep following. But as for the future. goats, as for the goats, I wish I could run goats on my entire property. The money for goats at the moment <laughs> is going through the roof. It's just a big demand on goats and the money's there, but I don't know how it can keep them in. I'd I, I, up the That's road, up the problem. road from the other farm, they've got that sheep meshing. It's probably a hundred by hundred, mm -hmm. and they had. I'm not, not sure what breed of goat they were, but they had horns at least a foot long either side, and they were getting out. Now, and they, we, they were adults. Yeah. We could not see a hole in the fence. People say, yeah, they can run up trees. They got rocks. They jump over rocks. But there's nothing on the front of this fence that we could see they could getting out. And every time we go out, we're almost running over them with the car yeah so it was very dangerous the actually. money might be good but it sort of scares me with uh goats getting out i just yeah from i've spoke to a few people and yeah i don't know it it's something we aren't prepared for at the moment i know i, I definitely know that people out there do it because there's yeah, a big demand yeah, there's oh, people sure. that do it and no problem and they're experts at for it but sure. goat is not our expertise we, we thought about getting a couple of goats when we do eventually move out to the other mm. farm and use them down bank. on the riverbank because it's, it's pretty steep there and we just want it cleaned up. There's a lot of noxious weeds that we can't get to. It's a bit steep for us to walk down with a whip snipper. So we're going to, we were going to get some goats in there and try them and try and get them young and train them to hot wire. But mm. there's also the option there. I noticed there's a guy that drives past with a trailer full of goats every couple of months. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's and true. I'm sure he contracts goats out for clean up purposes. So we may get him out to have a look like at, at the riverfront and find out how he keeps yeah. them in. And if, if he can keep them in, we'll just sort of mock what he's doing and then potentially yeah. get a couple for ourselves. So, so hopefully he will like set up the fences yeah. and oh, they do, yeah. the, the system yeah. and everything. You, you yeah. pay him so much per head and they come out and set the fences. So yeah. we'll find out how he that does be it. Better. And uh, we may even do a YouTube video on that when we get him oh, out. Yeah, but yeah and, we, good idea. and we may potentially get a couple of goats for ourselves just for that clean up for the areas. we It's hard to clean up, so we get the goats yeah. in so they can find them out. That'd that, so. save us a bit of work, wouldn't they? Yes, but sheep, mate, <laughs> definitely, definitely. They eat a lot different forage, so we're getting them in. Were there another part to that question that I haven't answered? Um, well, no, that was it. No, no, no. Then it was just about the Alan Savory. Oh, yes. But he's another one good one to follow and what we want to do. Yep. Um, and, yep. yeah, no, that's it. Alan Savory, yes. I've read um, Alan's book. I'm actually halfway through his second book now, so it's a good read. So, oh yeah, yeah, you are too. So I, I just, I just live and thrive for regenerative farming. So as many books as I can get, I'll read. I just, I just live it and breathe it. So anyone who's doing it that's got a book, guaranteed, I'll end up buying one. So look, we already have our, yes. our first caller. <laughs> so yes, I, I definitely, question. yeah, Alan Savory. Yep, he, he's he, he's old school from from South Africa. He's probably the longest. Regenerative farmer that I really uh, I know I think he's oh, okay. he's done great and then uh, yeah and there's Joel Sellerton he's been around a while and yeah yeah so yeah, yeah no yeah. I, I've I've yeah definitely reading Alan Savory's book okay thank you you're welcome <laughs> okay next one is from George Heller and George is asking how many head are you running? Your grass looks great, which I have to add that it does look great. Our snow is just about all gone. Gonna start running poly braid again today. Good video. Have a wonderful day. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Thank you, George. Thank you, George, for that. The yeah. uh, nice comment. We've been glad you like our videos. That's and... nice to know. Yeah. I'll... Some people like them. I've uh, got to force the partner down to sit and watch them on, on the odd occasion. She said she's busy. And I said, you're never too busy to learn about regenerative farming, especially <laughs> watching me. But Yeah, because I don't get enough of you yeah, too, I do. Yes, I know. She doesn't. So how many head do we run? So, yes, yes. Well, on this property here, I generally bring five head in because this is our trial property yeah, this is here. a trial property and the other farms 10 kilometers up the road so mm. this property here i bring five head in it's only on two acres and to cover the two acres it takes anywhere between nine and ten days i move them 
twice a day. So they're getting roughly 12 hours at a time, maybe a little bit less during the day and more at night. It's more like 10, 10 during the day and maybe 12 to 14 at night. So, because they, they sleep a little bit more at night time, but you wouldn't tell the grass they eat. So, yeah, but yeah so true. so I wouldn't say I've got them ultra high density, not even high density. I'd probably run those four head at, oh, I'd be about 0.2 of an acre. Because obviously it takes me 10 days to get round and it's two acres, mm. so probably mm. point to an acre. And yeah, and that's what I run here. But then when they finish here, obviously mm. you can't sustain five head all year round no. on two acres. You'd, you'd probably realistically only sustain one head all year round. Because they say it's only between point, uh, 1.8 and mm -hmm. about four to five acres is roughly what a head will need okay, all year yeah. round. But, but I'll put some clauses in there. That That's not, mm. that. I'm not talking about desert, and I'm not talking about bad areas of desertification. That's if you've got pasture and you've got grass and there's, mm. there's no signs of desertification between 1.8 up to four acres, depending where you are in mm. the world. So, mm. so yeah, and when they finish here, we take them at the other farm. So and at the moment, my dad had up to 18 head out there and I took my six head out there. So we're probably running at the time close to 24 head. But having said that, only 40% of my property is fenced out there. So yeah. the rest yeah. of it was, I pulled down because it was yeah, it wasn't. Dilapidated, dilapidated. Yeah, yeah it that, wasn't that, that great. That probably didn't come out good, but yeah. <laughs> the, 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 Split, old split posts and the barbed wire you could touch it and it was just destroyed just just that rusted it was yeah. just breaking and yeah. i reckon there'd probably only be two strands left out of the five strand original wire and it was only yeah. the trees and the long grass that were keeping the cattle in from the previous owner so we've since cleared all that out and yeah so at the yeah. moment we've got yeah. 28 head dad's downsizing getting out of the cattle because he wants to retire now him and mum so, uh, yeah, it's an exciting time. So he, he's always been a continuous grazer, like I said. I'm doing regenerative, so it's a matter of time when I get my fences up and start my cell grazing, I'll uh, yeah. get more head. So stay tuned for that one. I am looking forward to that. Oh, so am I. I'm looking Keep forward to the sheep and everything yeah. as well. <laughs> so I'll just check the time. We like to keep it to 15, 20 minutes. So I think we started at 43. So that's 5.04 now, so that's probably it. Okay. We've got another question here, but we'll uh, we'll start that on the uh, next one, I reckon. Yep, I think the puppies are starting to get a little bit hungry too. We've got to stoke up this fire and uh, have another cup of tea and enjoy this sunset. Cup of tea? What's this cup of tea business? So, <laughs> right, guys, have a terrific morning, a awesome afternoon, mm -hmm. and a excellent oh, evening. That's excellent. something different. Yeah, that is. Wherever you're watching this from, and we'll catch you later. See ya. Oh, is that ending okay? Yeah. This is when we're most relaxed. Puppy! Hopefully.